Class Maths. Today we're going to do functions and relations. And we're going to also discuss what a composite function is. Let's start by thinking about what is a function. It's really just a relationship between things. It's like a machine. When you have a machine, what do you have? You have something going in and something going out. And in between, you have the clogs. Whatever's going in is called your input. Whatever's going out is your output. And in the middle, you have the relationship between the input and the output, which is how you get from one to the other. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have f of x equals x plus 3. Now don't get too confused with the f. That's our function name, and we can use any letter of the alphabet we like. The x is our input. That's called our independent variable. The x plus 3 is our output. That's what we're going to get. And that's our dependent variable because it depends on whatever goes in. You can't work out x plus 3 without x. Let's take a look at an example. f of 1 is what? What does that actually mean? Wherever there's an x, I'm going to replace that with 1. So that means that f of 1 is going to equal 1 plus 3, which is 4. And the best way for you to think about that is that when x equals 1, f of 1, which really is y, equals 4. Remember, we're not overly concerned about the letters of the alphabet. So let's take a look. You can have lots of different examples of these. f of p equals p squared minus 3. Don't forget that p can be anything. So if I want to find f of 3, what does that mean? That means that wherever there's a p, I'm going to replace it now with 3. That makes it 3 squared minus 3, which is 6. f of minus 1. Remember, wherever there's a p, I'm going to just put in a minus 1. Don't forget your brackets because then you don't make a mistake with the minus. So minus 1 all squared minus 3 equals minus 2. If you're not sure and you can't do them so easily in your head, don't forget, use your calculator and get it right. f of a, remember, don't get confused because there's a letter. Wherever there's a p, you're going to replace it with an a. So you get a squared minus 3. Then you have f of y minus 1. Again, wherever there's a p, all you need to do is to replace it with y minus 1. This time we have y minus 1 all squared minus 3. Don't forget to simplify your answer. Expand the brackets. y squared minus 2y plus 1 minus 3. And then collect your like terms. y squared minus 2y minus 2. If you've forgotten how to expand brackets, you might want to go and have a look at that. Now, not all relations can be a function. So how can we tell the difference between a function and a relation? There are some rules that we can use. What are the rules? The first rule is it must be able to work for all the positive input values. That's our domain, all the possible x values. And a function can only have one output or one y value for every input, its x value. If a relationship does not follow one of these two rules, then it is not a function. If it's not a function, we just call it a relation. Let's take a look at some examples. Here we have a circle. So is that a relation or is it a special relation? Is it a function? Let's say we're looking at x equals 2. You can see if I draw a vertical line, x equals 2 has two y values. It's got a value up there and a value down there. That's a problem for a function because remember, rule number 2 says that a function can only have one y value for every x value. So this is not a function. Here we have another one. This time we have a parabola. We're not overly concerned about what the equation of the parabola is. We're just looking to see, is it a function or isn't it a function? Now, what's our test? We can draw a vertical line. That's the easiest way to do it. I've just picked x equals 1. We're not overly concerned where the line is, as long as it goes through our graph. How many times does that line cross my graph? Good, only once down there. That means that this graph is a function. So what you probably have noticed is that when I want to test to see if something's a function, 
drawing a vertical line can be very helpful because then all I have to look for is whether or not that vertical line crosses the graph once or twice. Let's take a look at these quickly. Here we have a graph. I draw a vertical line and it crosses the graph twice. Therefore, that is not a function. Remember that your line has to actually cross your graph and it's good to consider different vertical lines too sometimes. Here we have like a cubic type graph. We draw our vertical line and it only crosses the graph once. So this is a function. How are you finding this? Not too bad? I hope so. Here we have like a square root graph. We draw a vertical line. It also cuts the graph only once and that satisfies our rules. Therefore, this is a function. Remember, don't worry about what the equations of the functions are. We only want to know, is it a function or isn't it a function? And our last one is a semicircle. We draw a vertical line. It only crosses once as well. So this graph is a function. So what do we know about the vertical line test? If the line cuts the graph once, it's a function. If the line cuts the graph more than once, then it is not a function. I'm sure that all of you can do this. Now let's take a look at composite functions. A composite function is a function that depends on another function. We can't have one on its own. It's two functions that are attached or connected to each other. So one function is created when another function is substituted into the original function. That sounds very complicated, but don't worry too much. Once we do a couple of examples, you'll understand. For example, f of g of x is the composite function that is formed when g of x is substituted for x in f of x. Sounds very complicated. It sounds a lot more complicated than what it is. You can write this as f of g of x or g of f of x. Either one. And don't forget, the letters don't matter. So we can see these composite functions with different letters sometimes. Don't let the letters confuse you. Let's take a look at an example, and I'm sure you'll all find it much easier then. Let's say we have two functions, f of x equals x plus two, and g of x equals x squared minus two x plus three. And we want to find f of g of one. I think of this a little bit like brackets. Always start from the inside and do them separately. So we're going to work out what g of one is first. Now remember, wherever there's an x, you're gonna replace it with a one. So g of one equals one squared minus two lots of one plus three, which is two. Now that you know what g of one is, you're gonna replace that, which is two, you're gonna replace that for f of two. So f of two is going to equal 2 plus 2. Remember, wherever there's an x, I'm going to replace it with 2. 2 plus 2 is 4, so f of g of 1 is 4. But remember, we did it bit by bit. Don't try to do the whole thing in one go. It just makes it a little bit more complicated. Try to split things up, keep it methodical, and maths will be a lot easier for you. I don't want to spend too much time on these, so let's do one more example. Here we have one a little bit more complicated. f of x equals the square root of x plus x on two, and g of x is x squared minus five. Don't worry that the equation looks complicated, because all we need to do is to substitute things in. Here, my question says, find f of g of minus three. So what do I need to do? The bit inside first, and the bit inside is g of minus three. So remember, wherever there's an x in g, I need to put minus three, good. So that becomes minus three all squared minus five. Be careful of that minus three. And what do I get? Four, good. Now instead of g of minus three, I can write four. So I'm trying to find f of four. Remember, just make sure you're plugging it into the right equation because a very common mistake is that you put it into g instead of f. That's a bit tricky, but just be careful. Try not to make mistakes like that because we don't want to lose marks for things that we really can do. Now I'm trying to find f of four. That means that wherever there's an x in my f equation, I need to replace x with four. So what do I get? I get the square root of four plus four over two. You can do it in your head, do it on your calculator, and you get four. 
That means that f of g of minus 3 equals 4. I don't think that was too hard, and I think most of you can understand how to find a function, how do you know if it is a function or if it's just a relation, and how to find composite functions. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and press the notification bell. Bye.